Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about annotations in Java. If you are familiar with Java, you must have already seen one of these while programming, regardless any framework you work with. In this talk, we're going to discuss why, where, and how annotations are used in Java. Now, you must be wondering what are these at the rate keyword in your programs. They are there for a reason and must be doing something with your program, either helping the compiler to understand something or to perform some extra work that your code did not have to. As you may see on the screen, there are three annotation examples shown here. One is mock from Mokito framework. This is field annotation, which can be applied only to fields in a class. Second is test annotation, which is a method annotation only that is applied on methods. Third is type annotation, which can only be applied to types as in class, enum, or interfaces. In case you are wondering what are these annotations, the first one here at the rate mock annotation is used to mock the object while testing. That annotation comes from Mokito framework. Second is test annotation from JUnit framework that tells compiler to run this method as a test and not a real program. Third is a module annotation which is used to declare dependencies in Daga2. Now let's try to define annotation. My take on defining annotation is a bit like this. There are meta tags for programs to mark them for specific operations. That operation can be anything from changing the values of marked object at runtime to generating code at compile time. Each annotation we talk about here is either a runtime or a compile time annotation, which can be used with classes, methods, or fields that are marked with them. Now, before we dive into any more details on how annotation work and how to write them, let us remind ourselves that why annotations are useful and how can a developer benefit from it. They can be used to restrict elements at compile time for specific checks. Like in Android, we use nullable, not null, or layout resource annotations to perform specific checks at compile time. Like when we want an integer to be always pointing to a layout resource ID, we can add layout res annotation on that variable. We can mark classes to be treated especially when the code is run. Like when we do when writing JUnit test with Mockito. Previously, what we would do is to mark each mock field and call initializer to that mock. But with Mockito JUnit runner annotation at the top of the class, the compiler takes care of that now. We can mark methods for a specific reason, like when we use add test annotation on a method, we tell the compiler to run this method only in a test suite or in a test environment. Or when we use add deprecated annotation on a method, we are telling the user, the developer who is using our API, to avoid using this method because it is going to be removed in future releases of the framework or the most common example would be marking the method that we overwrite from parent class as at overwrite. So we mark this method to identify that this method is over overwrite of another method and is not this class own method. In UI framework or platforms like Android, iOS, 
there's a technique called view binding where we get the reference of a view in our code so we can perform some operation on that view that is shown to the user from our code. In Android, if you have used a butter knife or any other view binding library, you can see that it is also using annotation with parameter as the view ID to reduce the same assignment code to be written again and again. Annotations are widely used in field initializers or injections. Like in a spring framework, we use auto wire to let a spring initialize our objects based on some configurations. They can also be used in boilerplate code generation. Following the example of a spring framework, you can add get, set, or constructor annotation on top of the class to generate getter, setter, and constructor for your code, saving a lot of developer time to write redundant code again and again. One of the use cases uh, that I came across using annotation was to verify contracts. Let's say we want to write a factory for a pool of objects. Now, I can mark these objects, these class definitions, with my custom annotation at factory. In this way, whenever the user calls factory with that parameter of object, my code will check at runtime if that class is a valid object to be initialized by the factory. I can do this by using reflection API that Java provides us, which can check if the class is annotated with factory annotation or not. Our plan for this discussion is to get familiar with annotations. We will write one compile time annotation and one runtime annotation from the scratch.